Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance and uh, we got a game here. This is a game that was sent to me and uh, hopefully we get some good action in this one and of course it is set in so we can't expect anything but some good action. So this is going to be a cast where I don't really have a game from the top players so we're going to look at some average, uh, you could say some averagely rated players. So we got uh, Tib playing in the back for the top team. Uh, OP1 1138. Uh, as Beach for them. Uh, Pittle Belge as their uh, mid player. And Marty CH is their rock player. And here we have uh, X Drummer as, their, as the Beach for the bottom team. Uh, Grandmaster Czech playing uh, mid. Headhunter as Rock, and Nuclear Storm in the back. Uh, all unfamiliar faces. Uh, I know OP1. He was a friend of mine back on GPGNet. Uh, I've also seen Grandmaster Check around a few times, but uh, other than that, totally unfamiliar players. So we'll see how they do here on Settings. And of course, as always, the crucial point is the mid battle early on. Looks like a uh, Piddle Bell just taking it a lot more seriously. He's got an ACU, an NG, tanks, Selene, uh, Grandmaster just going in alone. He's got an NG, but that's a very late NG. So he's going to have to make something happen with his ACU. Piddle Bell uh, spreading out his things nicely. He's got his ACU on the top reclaiming and his NG on the bottom. He's already got two of the mass chunks. That's 2k mass right there. Grandmaster is going to get the third one, but Piddle Belge has already reclaimed a lot more than he has. You can see how much farther ahead he is in terms of reclamation. Grandmaster just sitting there. He needs to move here and start grabbing all this. Looks like we're going to see some aggression from X Drummer, so that's really good. It's a promising sign if we see average players uh, being extremely aggressive. You can see a transport at minute four. It looks like Marty is being very late with his transport. He's getting it now. He's less than 50% done. So we'll see how that turns out. And Pillow Belge has somehow forced Grandmaster Check into a huge retreat. And Marty says, give me more mass. Because if we look at Reclamation, Pillow Belge is already up to 8,500. And he's got so many more chunks. Grandmaster got something like 2,000. So massive difference for their teams. And now the drop looks like it will be successful. There is an interceptor, but that's not nearly enough. And if X-Drummer pays attention, now he's going to get a factory. Although it doesn't look like he's going to put too much on the factory. Looks like he is using just one NG for the factory, and he's making other stuff with the other two NGs. And that might give Marty the time to get in with his transport. Which could be trouble for X Drummer. We'll see what happens now. This is going to be very interesting. If X Drummer had gotten the factory, the f island would be his. Now he's switching to the point defense. And he's going to kill all of Marty's engines. He's got one NG left to finish the factory. So X Drummer is going to be able to take the island by the thinnest of margins. So that's going to put Marty in a bad spot, even though he is doing some good aggression here with a bomber. He could take out the radar, that'd be a good target, but now it's going to be killed by an interceptor. But he did kill the engineer down here, so that's good. Final reclamation in the middle, Grandmaster with 2k, and Piddle Belge with almost 10k. So five times more for Piddle Belge. And uh, you can see the top three scorers are Tib, OP1, and uh, Piddle Belge himself. Although X Drummer is doing very well. He's got his Tech 2 Master Extractors. He's putting mass storage around them. Wouldn't be surprised if X Drummer is one of the old sentence players from GPGNet under some other name because this is very similar to an early form that Sentence was played in. Nuclear Storm saying he's got horrible luck, although I'd say that his horrible luck is just his interpretation of not having enough NGs. You can see he has only. He's got a few. He's got one factory making NGs. It's not even making NGs. So, Nuclear Storm with a grand total of 19 NGs. I'm at 9. And if we look, uh, who's the back player for Tib? He's got a much better score. He has 83 NGs. Still a pretty low number, but 
that's way many that's way NG's more and you can see that uh that even with Obi Wan stealing one of uh Tibbs mass extractors he's still able to do much better than nuclear storm just because of the build capacity he has. He can spend all his resources and get more resources. He's getting his tech two power. Looks like Tib knows what he's doing. He must have played the back spot before or seen some videos. And Nuclear Storm finally is getting some more build capacity for himself, but this is very late. So we'll see if he's able to do anything. Now he's asking who's lagging, so obviously there was some lag in this game. Looks like between Headhunter and Obi Wan, it's very uh it's very quiet. Nothing's happening in there. Seraphim on UEF and a minute 11 no one has crossed the midpoint with any naval units but X drummer has managed to get this island down pretty well I'm not sure that Marty will be able to take it back anytime soon now he's going for a very heavy air build he's getting it four air factories around the hydro Let's see what he's gonna do with that he's get taking some mass extractors to tech through so Marty is definitely going for a huge economy and he doesn't he's not making any naval units so X drummer has a fairly decent production. He's got one Tech 1 and one Tech 2 Naval Factory. But he needs more. He needs a lot more NGs. This is the problem with these players. It's not that they're bad players, but they just don't know the principle of making enough NGs. You can see Opie 1 has a good amount, but uh, even this is not enough for minute 13. At minute 13, ideally, you want pretty much all the trees to be extracted and to have all Tech 2 mass extractors and surrounded by storage. That's pretty much how you want it done. And you can worry about Tech 3 mass extractors, but OP1 isn't even close to having everything extracted. Looks like the only player who has an, a, a good enough number of NGs is Tib, and even he could use a little bit more. Uh, Grandmaster Check, uh, just sitting on Tech 1 and Tech 2. You can see this is the big difference in the map. The bottom side has not done nearly as good a job of cleaning up the forest as the top team. They are trying to make up for it. Now it looks like Nuclear Storm does know about the factory attack move command. So if he is a noob, he's a noob that knows the mechanics of the game. And now he's just got his RAS. So he definitely knows how to play the back spot. He's got the first RAS working on ASF. Looks like Tib also with the first RAS. But he's got a Tech 3 as well. Looks like he's not going for the second race, he's just getting a Tech 3 power instead, which is also good. Looks like X Drummer is uh is bullying Headhunter a little bit. Telling him what to do. Looks like X Drummer is uh is feeling a little cocky here with his eleven fourteen rating, beating up on Marty. Insulting uh Insulting Headhunter. This headhunter is getting destroyed here by Tech 1 subs. This looks like OP1 didn't make anything but subs. And Marty is getting destroyed by X Drummer. I think the key to becoming a good sentence player is just to watch the the other sentence players do what they do the top sentence players that's how I learn how to play sentence I just watch some of the top players like Dim and uh, Sith and Berg and all the rest and I became a good sentence player myself just by doing what they do now of course uh, Headhunter uh, is doing his best to use torpedo bombers and he pushes the subs back with ease that's the problem with Tech 1 subs, they're very fragile. And uh, looks like Nuclear Storm also knows micro. So Nuclear Storm, despite having the lowest rating, probably has the best micro of any player on this uh, in this game because he definitely knows how to micro his ASF. And he knows that he needs a lot of NGs around the factory. So uh, Nuclear Storm definitely knows what he's doing. And we'll see if Tib can answer in a uh, similar fashion. And this is a mistake. Uh, assisting a factory to make engineers is only useful when you have a maximum of four engines. Once you get more than four, it's more efficient to just make another factory. So right now he's being less efficient than if he simply had a second factory. And it all comes down to the the units rolling out of the factory and the time that you lose there. 
Now, uh, it looks like a very static battle in the middle has been going on all game long. Piddle Belge and Grandmaster Czech just building up shields and artillery and shooting in fact and forth at each other. It looks like uh, Mardi is able to repel against X Drummer simply by using some tech two. And this is uh, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. Marty is gonna get four Tech Three Air Factories. He's already got one. He's working on three more simultaneously. Crazy stuff for Marty. He's a crazy man. And he's going Tech Three land. He's already got a Tech Three Air Factory, so he's going for five. Ridiculous for Marty. There's almost no way he'll have enough power to support that unless Tib can provide a lot of power. It looks like a. Uh, what both teams have is a good back player. Both teams have a back player who know the essential principles and they know what they're doing. Lots of power, lots of NGs, lots of ASF. The only thing that I can fault Nuclear Storm for is not extracting the trees. There's still way too much forest for me to be comfortable with and Tip has done a much better job even though there's still this little patch here that could be reclaimed as well as down here. But overall, I think Tib is playing better for the back spot. It looks like Piddle Belge might be actually getting the upper hand here in the middle fight because the Seraphim artillery, of course, is very good. Because uh, Seraphim are Imba like that. Here comes the Cyber Imba Navy versus the Seraphim Imba Shield. So we have Imba. Uh, units going at it here, and it looks like Imba Cybern is going to beat Imba Seraphim, at least for now, because the shields will not hold out for very long. If he just takes out the generators themselves, he'll be in really good shape. It's a lot of Tech 3 already. Looks like a uh, huge number of ASF for X Drummer, and uh, Tib with a mistake. Uh, let's his ASF get killed by some cruisers. And the RD manages to push the Navy back for now. There goes a cruiser. And there's just raining shells. And looks like Piddle Belge with a shield generator on 9 HP is going to be able to pull out of this one. He's getting another shield gen. Uh, if he can get that up, then he'll be good. But it doesn't look like he will. He won't get it up. But uh, definitely still alive. But Grandmaster Check must have just gotten an advantage with all this extra time to build shields. Looks like OP-1 with a scary looking navy here. Lots of subs, uh, a few shields, uh, some destroyers, cruisers. We'll see if uh, Headhunter has anything to deal with this. He's going Tech 3, so some Tech 3 subs could definitely serve him well here. And these will easily counter the Tech 1 subs. So Headhunter just needs to get out a few uh, Yathsus, as they're called, which I remember because it's very similar to the Greek word Yasu, which means hello. Of course, I'm not Guile, so I don't know the names of every single unit. So, uh, looks like a scout from Nuclear Storm. He's looking for, and he found the strat bombers from Tib, so uh, he knows that Tib is going to try to snipe someone. And Piddle Belge is doing his best to micro back and forth, doing it decently well, actually, dodging a lot of shots. But he won't keep that up for very long, I shouldn't think. Although he might have managed to dance his way out. The units are trying to push in, but if he can somehow get into the other ocean, then he'll be okay, but... Oh, he's down to 300, down to one, and he almost did it. That was uh, a great piece of dancing. Now the Strat Bombers have no choice but to target the naval units, and they are taking a lot of damage. A bomb right there would have killed all of these. Now here comes a big air fight. I think I might have to take this to, pl to plus two. It looks like a nuclear storm with much better micro than uh, Tib. He will take air. And with the bottom side having taken air, that's very significant. That means that uh, Headhunter will probably have no problems defending against this UEF Navy with his 
Imba subs. So Nuclear Storm uh, says triumphantly that he has air. Of course, it didn't uh, prevent Grandmaster from almost losing his Tech 3 power. Looks like Marty has been having problems all game long. He's trying to support four air factories. And somehow he's getting power from that, so definitely he's getting power from his ally. So Tib, with the most classic move that an air player can make after they've lost air, is to make a nuke. Which is some, somewhat illogical to me, at least that's what it seems, because if you've just lost air, then why would you make a nuke? waste mass instead of building air and on the possibility that you'll be able to nuke someone when they probably have nuke defense and you don't have any way to take it out now that you've uh, now that you've lost air. Marty says it's a lost game while I rant on about theories. Nuclear Storm says for you maybe. It's a good answer. Yeah, and uh, X Drummer played very well. I mean, he doesn't have nearly enough build capacity in his navy, but he still did better. And X Drummer says he will build bugs now that Nuclear Storm has air. So I'm starting to think that X Drummer must be must be uh, a classic sentence player from maybe 2009, 2010, because this is characteristic of of early sentence, not having a lot of build capacity on Navy, but still uh, winning. And then as soon as you get air to build Soul Rippers bugs. And having a giant economy. And having Tech 3 air production. So, very suspicious from X Drummer. Although this uh, this type of play would not survive against a modern uh, good sentence player. With the amount of Navy and Tech 1 air that people make. Now, OP1 has switched to Tech 3 himself. Looks like he has managed to to somehow uh, kill these Tech 3 subs. Not sure what he has. He has some torpedo boats, but... I shouldn't think that one is enough to take it out. And the UF destroyers don't have a lot of HP, I mean, uh, torpedo DPS. But Grandmaster with a fat boy, and actually with a fat boy, that means a lot. That means he can definitely recover a lot of ground here and make a push. And X Drummer has his Navy control. Now he's going to get the bug very soon, and they can, uh, they can try to kill whoever they want because the bug is an exceptional unit to use as, uh, for snipes. Marty is also noticing how Imba Cybern are with their Tech 2 Navy. A nuclear storm is scouting. He's going to see a huge eco. He's going to see the nuke. Looks like X Drummer is going to move his Soul Ripper towards the Fat Boy. And now the top team has two ASF players because Marty has gone very hard into AF ASF spam. Uh, it seems that Nuclear Storm doesn't feel like he can keep up. And he probably can't, especially if there's two players microing against him. That's almost impossible to beat. Actually, it is impossible to beat. You cannot beat, uh, even if you have the best micro in the world, you can't beat two players who also have decent micro at the same time in one air fight. Here comes, uh, comes the fat boy from Grandmaster. He's not escorting it with anything, so in fact, these tanks would probably kill it right now because it doesn't have anything with it. Fat boy is good as a support unit, but not as a not to just attack by itself. <sighs> Nuclear Storm asking where did the bugs go? Looks like they are there are two of them now and two bugs is very uh scary. It's a very scary prospect and looks like uh Tib does he know that he doesn't have any radar, so he doesn't even know where the fat boy is, let alone that it's by itself. If he can get a good scouting run in and see that it's by itself, he knows that he'll be able to kill it. If all this already focused on the fat boy, it would do a lot of damage. And the chicken is about to come online, and that will uh, effectively put an end to this fat boy's dreams. But 
But the two Soul Rippers, definitely a, a scary proposition for the top team. They're going to have to figure out a way to deal with it. Now that the, the Othams are going to get under the shields. And the fat boy who dreamed of glory and is now getting killed by the first unit that is produced. So a chunk of about, well now it just lost a lot of value because it just got hit. And it looks like they're going to try to get an air fight over these cruisers. So this is going to be very bad for the top team. The Soul Rippers are probably going to be able to kill the chicken with ease. And here come the ASF. And with whenever that happens, you're probably going to lose air because you've given the other player such a huge advantage. So uh, There's so many different colors of ASF here. But uh, Nuclear Storm just got in a huge advantage with that first turn after the top team had to focus on a Soul Ripper. Chicken is about to go down. It lost its health very quickly to two bugs. And Marty calls it GG and leaves. There is nothing they can do. And of course now we got a nice desync. So no sense in having any of that. I think there is going to be a clear winner because when the other team has air control and they have two soul rippers, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Although uh, with Nuclear Storm pulling away, they might be able to take them out. But at this point, uh, there's no way back for the top team. So I think I'll stop this video here because it might still take a while to end. So hopefully everyone enjoyed this one. It was an unusual game from some average players, not the average pro players. So I'll see you guys next time.